Let's talk about the mines. Hello, I am Zarkoon and this is World of Warships Legends. Today we're going to take a look at this brand new premium tier 7 German light cruiser, which is the reward ship for the ongoing campaign. This isn't going to be a traditional review because at this time Comcast is down for me and I can't even log into the game to take a look at the stats and take notes on it. So everything I'm going to say is just going to be from memory and it's sort of going to be like a first impressions video. We're starting off with this little clip here because I've got a sequence where I'm fighting a Pyotr bag ration and a Vladivostok is going to come around the island. And I think this highlights both a peculiarity and a strength of this ship at the same time. Take a look at the damage that I'm getting at this bag ration when he pops up around the corner again with this high explosive. And keep note of the Vladivostok coming around the other side of the island. You can see that when these shells hit that Pyotr bag ration, they aren't doing a whole lot of damage. And we're going to send out, what is that, eight torpedoes at that Vladivostok. The mines comes equipped with 16 torpedoes, eight on either side of the ship. Six kilometer range, typical German torpedoes. That makes this thing quite good at holding down islands, much like a lot of the other German cruisers. And when a Vladivostok drives past like that, well, not too terribly difficult to take him down. Now, on the other hand, this high explosive, we still haven't really done a lot of damage to this Pyotr Bagration. Now, keep in mind, we're only able to level 50% of our firepower at him. The mines has 12 150mm guns set in four triple turrets, and we've only got two of those triple turrets pointed at the bag ration. We're going to be able to switch to some AP here get a little bit more damage but it's going to become ineffective as this guy angles so one thing to keep in mind about the mines is high explosive is that the alpha strike much like most german high explosive alpha strike is pretty anemic pretty mediocre i think the he alpha strike on mines is 1700 and the fire chance at base is something like eight percent those kind of numbers are the kind of numbers you would see more on, say, destroyers with, honestly, mediocre HE Alpha Strikes. 1700 is not a lot, and an 8% fire chance isn't great. But that doesn't mean that this ship isn't capable of pumping out a crap ton of damage. It's when you get into situations like this, bow on with a light cruiser, and you're trying to chip at them, chip away at them with your DPM, well, it can sometimes be difficult, and ultimately we didn't even end up taking down that Pyotr bag ration, so that should give you some kind of indication. But let's move on to the main feature here. And before we get started, forgive me if I seem a little bit clumsy. I was using a different controller preset than the one I'm used to, because I wanted to achieve something, but it's just really difficult to play with this controller preset because I'm not used to it. Nevertheless, we're going to have a pretty good game in the mines here, and you're going to see that this thing is capable of pumping out the damage. Now, what is the mines? Well, the mines is essentially a ship built on the hull of the German Tier 7 heavy cruiser Hipper. But instead of having eight 210 millimeter guns, it has the 12 150 millimeter guns, and thus it is designated as a light cruiser. Also, unlike the Hipper itself, Mines does not enjoy the same armor scheme. Instead of the 27 millimeter plating that Hipper has, Mines has 25 millimeters of armor plating everywhere. And of course that 2 millimeters makes a very significant difference because it means mines can be overmatched pretty much everywhere by 15 inch guns or any guns la larger than 15 inches. Mines does however retain the hipper turtleback armor scheme around its citadel. Only the slopes on mines's turtleback are 40 millimeters. 
much like the Prinz Eugen, which I think also has 40 millimeter Citadel slopes. Hipper, I think, has 30 millimeter slopes, so the turtle back on mines is, I guess, technically better, and it can't be overmatched by any battleship in the game, but that doesn't mean battleships can't citadel the mines. They absolutely can, and so you don't want to really be eating a lot of shots from them. Instead, you want to pump out this outrageous DPM as quickly and uh, abundantly as possible. If you do, you can melt battleships, cruisers, destroyers, not only using your high explosive, but also the excellent armor piercing, and we'll be able to see some of that in action. So I think mines, very, very strong, and it's probably best comparable with the new tier six premium German light cruiser Weimar. Although some people in my stream yesterday seemed to think Mines wasn't quite as impressive as the Weimar, but I disagree. I'd say it definitely is, and it gets the benefit of having heals as a tier 7 cruiser, which I suppose increases its survivability prospects. Anyway, what are we doing in this game? I think we're trying to play the Mines the way you want to play it. Like I said, you don't really want to be taking a bunch of shots from battleships, and the shell arcs on the mines, they're pretty floaty. They're not maybe quite as floaty as something like an American light cruiser, i.e. Cleveland, but you can definitely arc them over islands. You can find positions behind islands that are concealed and protected from any return fire, and you can just rain down high explosive on these battle battleships and cruisers and all the rest of that. Now you'll notice when these high explosive shells hit the battleships, we are getting a lot of penetrations and very few shatters. That is of course because the Germans enjoy the quarter caliber penetration on their 150 millimeter guns, which I believe allows them to penetrate even more than 32 millimeters of armor. I think 37 or 38 millimeters of armor is what the mines can penetrate with its high explosive. Of course, that excellent penetration comes with that trade-off I was talking about earlier, which is the anemic high explosive alpha strike. But this is definitely a case of you throw enough crap at the hull, and uh, some of it sticks. I don't think that's actually how the saying goes, but you know what I'm, you know what I mean. The AP on this thing also excellent. And like I said, there's those floaty shell arcs sort of coming into play. Shell velocity not too fast. Not always the easiest thing to hit destroyers at range. You do have to sort of dial in the aim. But the ship smasher, well, I don't know what he's doing. But whatever he thought he was doing, it's not going to work out the way he wanted it to, I assume. Because he's going to end up going down. And that is the enemy team's only destroyer. So... We've lost our destroyer, they've lost their destroyer. We're on pretty even footing, but you can see the majority of the enemy team is over on this side of the map, and I think this is the kind of thing you want to see when you're playing the mines. You want a target-rich environment like this, and you want a position where you can just rain down all your firepower on all of these targets. And again, with this Atlanta here hiding behind the island, I suppose we probably could have switched to the armor piercing against this Atlanta and gotten some good results. Or maybe not, actually. He is not broadside to us. I think he's facing bow in. But you can see, even though these shells do penetrate that Atlanta, they aren't really doing a lot of damage individually or even altogether. And we aren't actually going to be able to end up melting this Atlanta down. Again, I don't want to understate the anemic characteristics of this HE Alpha. It's really, really not very good. It's the penetration and the damage over time that really sort of add up to give you big damage numbers by the end of a game. And it's not really like... I've heard people say it's sort of like a German version of the Cleveland, but it's kind of not because the Cleveland's HE Alpha does quite a bit more than this, and you can get a lot more damage with a lot less shells just due to the Cleveland's raw high explosive penetration than you can get 
with the mines. Nevertheless, you know, it's capable of pumping out a lot of damage in here. Against this broadside Iowa, we're going to switch to the armor piercing, and we're going to see what that can do, because frankly, it is astounding. I don't have the numbers in front of me, but I assume the mines enjoys the highest potential AP DPM out of any cruiser in the game. Don't quote me on that, that might not be 100% true, but I think it is. I think the mines AP DPM is basically unrivaled. So anytime you get the opportunity to shoot this AP into a broadside target, or even just, you know, a poorly angled target like a battleship and you're aiming at the superstructure, you can expect quite a bit of damage. Take note of this Amagi in front of us, 8 kilometers away. His attention is captured by our teammates, so he's not really going to be able to shoot at us. And you can see the kind of salvos we're able to get against him. That's an 8.6k armor-piercing salvo into his broadside, followed by a 3k one. These shots just will add up very, very quickly if anything gives you broadside. So be sure to switch to the AP, because that's how you're going to maximize the damage output on this thing. The HE, with its anemic alpha strike, you know, a lot of damage over time, but the AP, big, chunky hits when you shoot it against the broadside of battleships. That Amagi goes down. The enemy team is ahead of us on points, by the way, and they have one more ship than we do. So we're going to start laying into this Bismarck. And notice, pretty much for this entire game, we've tried to remain in a position where we can just shoot, 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 over and over and over again. And that's what you're going to want to do in the mines. You're just going to want to be shooting constantly to make the most out of your HE and your AP. And, you know, I was talking about the fire chance, too, on the mines, saying it was, you know, it's a little bit anemic. You can see we've landed, what, 200, over 230 shell hits, and we've gotten seven fires in the course of this game. So it does feel like it kind of doesn't start as many fires as maybe you would want it to, but you could, of course, buff that by choosing some commander skills that increase the fire chance. On the other hand, maybe it's a good thing that it isn't starting, you know, a massive crap ton of fires because it would just feel very oppressive to play against. Honestly, it still probably feels pretty oppressive to play against if there's really nothing you can do about uh, concealed mines, you know, that has taken up a position where you can't really hit him back, but he can rain down high explosive on you. Basically, you don't want to ever push in to this ship. This ship is designed to punish people pushing in. Excuse me while I change the preset on my controller here. I guess I should say the reason I'm doing this is because I want that overview gun lock camera that you get by holding down the L1 button right there. If you're zoomed in and then you press the L1 button in that circumstance, your guns will stay on target and they'll continue shooting at your aim point and your aim point will stay fixed even if you move the ship. So it does give you the ability to look around more and be more aware of what ships might be shooting at you or might be a threat to you if you're able to hold down that button while still firing. And that's why I was trying to use this preset, although I just, honestly, I kind of can't. I, I feel like I played this game a little bit clumsier with this preset, so I'm probably going to be sticking to preset 3. Just a little bit of an experiment that I was trying. And now we see, you know, the range on these mines guns, pretty good, but again, it can be a little bit tricky. Maybe you aren't going to get it on the first try to line up these ships on targets that are far out there, especially ones behind an island like that Siegfried. Nevertheless, we are able to dial it in and start scoring hits on that Siegfried, and I think we're going to light some more fires. Actually, we are going to finish this game with a pretty respectable fire total, I might say. So maybe that 8% chance, you know, isn't as bad as I initially thought. Again, this is more of a first impressions type video because I don't have the tools available to me to do a full review. I can't even get onto the game right now because of my internet and record, you know, just footage of the ship sitting in port. So that does make it difficult to do a full-on review, but 
I would say from playing the mines as much as I have yesterday, I think I probably played about 15 games in it, I'd say this is a very strong ship, and it's well worth buying the Admiralty backing for this campaign to get this ship, because it's just really, really good. And it's really, really fun to play, honestly, especially if you can get into situations like I was in in the very first clip of this video, where you're hugging an island and you're really stopping any ships from pushing past that island because of your torpedo threat. Now we're moving in on the Siegfried, though. Bit of a dangerous thing, because the Siegfried, of course, has 15-inch guns, and he can overmatch our armor scheme. But... It appears his attention has been captured by our teammates, so we're going to take a moment to put our torpedoes out in the water, and we're going to use our German sonar to detect his torpedoes, switch to that AP. Once again, about, what was that, like a 9k hit into that Siegfried before he goes down? So, once again, AP super effective. I should say that the sonar on this thing, it's, I believe, your typical German cruiser sonar. It detects torpedoes from pretty far out and detects ships from pretty far out, although I really haven't gotten an occasion to, say, push into a smoked-up destroyer with the mines yet, but I imagine if you do find yourself given such opportunities that uh, the mines will be just as effective at doing that kind of counter-destroyer work as like the Weimar or the Munchen or any of the other German cruisers with their excellent sonar. The Tirpitz is the last ship left alive. He's quite far out of our gun range right now, and we're going to try to drive up a little bit closer so that we can hopefully pad our damage numbers before this game ends. But, you know, over 150,000 damage, high caliber metal. I think we're going to finish this game with... 3,000 base XP and a little bit of change. So, very good game in the mines. It's certainly capable of doing even more than this. Frankly, this is probably like a mild damage game in comparison to some of the higher damage ones you can do. I, I can imagine very good cruiser players being able to consistently rack up like 200k damage in this thing. It's just... It's just a DPM machine, and that is part of what makes it so fun to play. So I enjoy the ship. Uh, I believe I probably won't enjoy being on the receiving end of this kind of firepower, just like I don't with the Weimar, but I will certainly be getting the Admiralty backing to obtain this ship because, as you can see, it's a fearsome damage dealer, and I'd say it's well worth it. Also, shout out to the Amagi that earlier we damaged very, very harshly with our AP. I think his name is Alpha Wolf Sky. He sent a message to me after this game saying he hoped that this was worthy of a review. And while this isn't really a review, it's more of a first impressions video because of my internet problems right now. Uh, it definitely was worth a video, so GG Alpha Wolf Sky, hope you enjoyed this one, and I hope the rest of you guys enjoyed it as well. Give it a thumbs up if so, consider subscribing if you haven't already, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.